Pack your bags, Brainiacs. We're going on a vacation somewhere far, far away. No, not to the depths of South America or to the edges of Asia, because today we're going to space. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't it a little too soon for civilians to be going into space? Surely there's more tests to be done. After all, we don't want to get out there and find out there's a ton of xenomorphs on Pluto or something. Well, pish posh to that, I say. You may not know it, but the space industry has seen a ton of innovation over the last couple decades. Largely due to the increasing involvement of the private sector. And it seems like we could be mere months away from space tourism becoming a reality. What is space tourism, you may ask? Well, it's a rapidly developing segment of the aviation industry that aims to allow your average citizen to become an astronaut and explore the great frontier of space, whether that's for fun, leisure, or business purposes. From the time man set foot on the moon, and probably even well before then, people around the world have looked up to the night sky and aspired to journey beyond it. I understand the appeal, that unique view of Earth, the experience of zero gravity, and the knowledge that you're among one of the first humans in history to journey beyond our atmosphere is priceless. Actually, there is a price, and it's really, really high, but more on that in a second. That said, man first set foot on the moon way back in 1969, so why aren't we making frequent trips into the cosmos just yet? As usual, the answer is related to cost. Until recently, space-related activities were were so expensive and politically motivated by events such as the Cold War that only government bodies like NASA were really allowed to handle them. Unfortunately, this also meant space exploration relied predominantly on government funding, which dried up significantly over time. In fact, by 2011, NASA had lost so much funding, it had to retire its own space shuttle program for good. Ironically, this meant that U.S. astronauts were relying on Russian shuttles for trips to and from the International Space Station. And at a cost of $80 million a trip, it wasn't exactly chump change. So, instead, the U.S. pivoted towards contracting private space exploration corporations like SpaceX and Boeing to shuttle its astronauts, almost as a space taxi service. These contracts are worth a whopping $6.8 billion, so I'm hoping the space taxi driver doesn't let the meter run. Of course, since private companies are now in charge of space travel, it's in their best interest to reduce costs and maximize profitability, and as a result, we've seen significant innovation in the industry. For example, rocket launches used to involve a whole lot of expensive parts that were essentially only good for a one-time use, since they would disintegrate upon re-entering our atmosphere. However, in 2018, Elon Musk's SpaceX successfully launched rockets that were able to fly themselves back to Earth, a development that could save a ton of money in the long run and help make space travel more financially viable. It's because of developments like this that the concept of space tourism is even on the table. After all, imagine if every time you drove a car, your engine exploded. You probably wouldn't drive anywhere unless you absolutely had to. But now imagine your engine doesn't explode. You'd be far more likely to take it for a spin. So, now that affordable space travel is suddenly viable, a bunch of companies are already working on putting together commercial space tourism packages, with the expectation that people will actually be able to buy them within the next couple of years. Virgin Galactic, for example, is selling seats upon a commercial spacecraft and will take a quick flight to the upper atmosphere, where you'll be able to float around weightlessly and take in views of the Earth and its curved horizon in what will hopefully be a sobering wake-up call for flat earthers, but probably won't be. This quick 20-minute excursion beyond our atmosphere will only start taking place in 2021 at the earliest and is set to cost a whopping $20,000 to $30,000 per head. And that's the most economical space tourism option available. If you want to get bougie with it, though, a space tech startup called Orion Span is working on the world's, or should we say, universe's first luxury space hotel. The Aurora Space Station will be able to host up to six guests at a time, including two crew members, and costs a whopping $9.5 million for a 12-day tour. The hotel will orbit the Earth every 90 minutes, meaning guests will see 16 sunrises and sunsets every day, and get to engage in activities like zero-gravity ping-pong. There will even be high-speed internet on board, so you can share your once-in-a-lifetime experience with the folks back on Earth. After all, what's a trip to space if you can't flex it on the gram? 
While I keep referring to space tourism as a future activity, the reality is it's already happened. American multi-millionaire Dennis Tito became the world's first space tourist when he paid $20 million to visit the International Space Station way back in 2009. Around six people have followed the lead since then, but again, the costs are so prohibitive that it isn't really worth it for most. Some industry experts have predicted that the 2020s will mark the culmination of two decades worth of developmental work that has gone into space space travel, and finally birth the entirely new industry of space tourism. Of course, there are still some problems that need to be overcome. Currently, there is no real regulation as to who will be allowed to fly and who won't. Unlike your average destination hotel stay, being in space is physically stressful. So there will need to be some kind of mandate as to who is allowed to fly and who is not. Or else you could be stuck in a spacecraft, feeling nauseous and dizzy, or worse, for over a week. Also, the risks are still really high. An accident in space can be catastrophic, and the spacecrafts themselves aren't exactly 100% secure. Boeing's Starliner capsule, for example, was forced to abandon a mission to the International Space Station when it entered the wrong orbit by accident, and has almost been destroyed due to technical errors twice. Fortunately, there were no people on board, but these aren't really things you want to hear about on our prospective rides. So, while space tourism is on the horizon, it is still super expensive, so only a small group of people, aka the super duper rich, will actually be able to afford to do it for a while. And there's likely going to be a ton of legislation and safety checks enacted before it becomes all accessible to the average person. But still, it's worth getting excited about. After all, you're closer to vacationing on the moon than you think. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, then head over to the Brainiac YouTube channel for more futuristic fun.